Hello everyone. So today I'm going to give you some tips and tricks for making interactive notebooks on Google Slides. I create templates for my students uh, to create their own interactive notebooks and I use the template for them to follow so the students have access to my template and their own notebook. When I do make their notebooks, I try to make it as plain as possible and I encourage them to personalize them, decorate them, uh, put color in them however they like to match their own personality. So I try not to do too much with the colors. One thing to note when they are, when you have students do their notebooks is having them link different pages. In this page, uh, they make their table of contents or update their table of contents, and topics are linked to whatever slide it's on. So for example, if I were to click on making light shine, it would take them to the slide about that. So it just makes it easier to access, especially when you get further along in the pages. If I want to link something, what I would just do is highlight whatever I want to link, click on the paper clip, it slides in this presentation, so I would, whatever that slide that topic is on, that's what I would select, so if it was slide 11, I would click on that, and I would click apply, and now it's linked to slide 11, it'll take me to slide 11. Another thing that is important is having an index. So I also had the students link the index on the side. Right now, there's not many pages in their notebook, but eventually there will be a lot of slides for their notebook. So if they link the index now, it will be easier to access later on. Another thing you can do is have uh, pages that are locked for students so that, that there's not much for them to mess up. So for example, I created this page and I haven't locked it yet. So if I want them to go back and write on it and I don't want them to mess up the page, I can lock the object. In order to make the object locked, you just create the page and make it however you like. Then what you would do is you would uh, select whether you want it as a JPEG or a PNG. Either of those will work. I'll choose a JPEG this time. You open it. Then you save that page. And then you can go to background. Choose image. Where find wherever you saved it. Now the it inserts it as a background, so the objects are locked on that page. You can insert text boxes. And then allow them to write within those text boxes and you don't have to worry about them moving the locked objects. This, for this key concepts page, what you can have students do is, as you are going through the units and learning about new concepts in the unit, students can go back to this page and they can add new key concepts that they learn along the way. So then when they go back to their notebook, they can refer to the key concepts that they learned in the unit. You can pre-make a page and have students move and sort objects around. In this case, they were doing a simulation. They could put together their objects and then whatever they didn't need, they can uh, delete themselves. Another interactive idea is to create draggable piles. For example, I have this arrow. They're asked to power a flashlight with a battery using energy from the sun. So they're able to sort these objects. These arrows, when you move them, 
more arrows come, so it seems like there's an endless amount of gold they can use however many arrows they need. They can also use as many cards as they need, depending on how they're making their object. If you want to learn how to make draggable piles, I will link that video in the description so that you can see how to make a draggable pile. To copy the page, all you have to do is right click, click copy, and then go to have the students go to their own site and paste it into their own site. And this warm up, since they do the warm up when they enter our virtual meeting, I put in instructions for them to make a copy of the slide and to put it in their notebook. So they knew when they came in to make a copy and start their warm up. Also, when they come in to the room, I don't put my slide in presentation mode because I want them to see that this was slide 18. You can also number your pages if you want, but it's just easier to not put it in presentation mode and they can see it's slide 18 so they know to go to slide 18 to find the slide. I like to use the standard Google slide sizes, but if you want to change your size of your page, all you would do is go to File, then go to Page Setup, and then you could change the page, choose Custom, and then change the page to whatever you want. Please keep in mind that once you start working on the notebook and then you decide you don't like the size that you're using and you want to change it, what happens is it will also change the size of your objects. What I like to do in Google Classroom is I create a topic. If you don't know how to create topics in Google Classroom, you just go to Create and Topic, and you just type the title of the topic, and all your assignments or resources will go under that topic. So I have a topic for Meet Links, for the unit, first weeks. I create a, created a topic for a science notebook, and in there I have a resource notebook, and then I have their actual science notebook, and I have the template science notebook as a resource. And that's how you create interactive science notebook with Google Slides. And that's it. Thank you for watching.